Hey guys, happy Monday. I am taking my radio flyer to the trash area in our apartment complex. This is the underground parking area and it's so wild. I think that like this area is designed, this, this complex is designed to host uh, thousands and thousands of residents, you know? But our building, I, I honestly think it's just us in our building. When, uh, when I go upstairs to uh, take the elevator to the 90, 19th floor where our, uh, where our place is, the, uh, the elevator takes us up. I, I sometimes go up in the morning, take the elevator from the first floor to the 19th floor, stay up there all day long, and then like in the evening, maybe you have to go down. And when I go to the elevator, the elevator's still on the 19th floor. <laughs> so like, I think we're the only people that are in the building. I know there's some renovations going on, but I don't think there's anybody that's like living there. Even at the end of the day, when I go up and the 19th floor, I'll wake up in the morning and it'll be still sitting there on the 19th floor. And it's very echoey. There's no cars here to deaden the sound. Man, I love this radio flyer. This thing is amazing. We're gonna, we're gonna go shopping today, or the, tonight. I haven't made a video in a while. I thought I really should. For those of you, uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. for those of you that have uh, come here for the first time, my name is Matt. I'm talking to you from Ningbo, China. Um, if you're watching this way in the future, whatever happened with that whole virus thing? Because we're in the middle of it right now. I've uh, finished two quarantines, one in America, one in China, and now we are living fairly normal life in our apartment in Ningbo, China. Sort of moving things in. Every so often it's getting more and more filled in. Our, our apartment is looking more and more lived in. It's quite, quite nice. I want to go shopping and uh, head out to a uh, sort of an, a store called Olay. Uh, Western food, specialty food. And I like to go there and get some cheese. I normally am cycling around the world on a recumbent trike. And just before I paused my tour to come back home for Chinese New Year, uh, I was focused on a keto diet. I was trying to lose some weight. So no rice, no noodles, no, uh, no sugars, you know. Uh, in moderation, it's a quite good diet to, 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 to do. When we quarantined in the USA, then came back here, then I was just kind of dilly-dallying around. It was tough to hold it together. But now I'm, I'm kind of interested in getting back in the zone and getting back on the quarantine diet. So I thought I'd take you with me as we go to uh, Olay. So let's go. It's very eerie in here. Hello? Hello? It's so wild uh, to live in a world where on the passenger side of your car, if you're driving alone, you'll almost always have a container of uh, disinfectant, uh, <laughs> like cleaning wipes and uh, masks. I guess that's just the world we live in right now. An age of masks, alcohol wipes, and paranoia. I've had a few people ask me if I've been exposed to any racism or bigotry while I'm in China. Um, there have been reports, especially in Guangzhou, of people getting harassed. Sort of the, the roles have been switched. It used to be that, that the Chinese were carrying this virus out to the outside world and now it's, it's it, the China area is under control. The outside is now out of control somewhat and the cases are coming into uh, China. So there's this reverse paranoia from before. So there are a lot of cases of people who have not worn their mask or um, not abided by the, the lockdown. And it's kind of making everybody uh, sort of angry at the foreigners who aren't sort of following the, the rules that the Chinese religiously held to in order to kill the virus. Like China has banded together in a way that few other countries, some, some have, but few other countries have in order to get this, uh, this epidemic in China, the pandemic globally under control. And so when they see foreigners that aren't, aren't abiding by the rules, 
hate begets hate, you know, and there's anger being thrown around in all directions. And I think that it, a lot of it, like, it's like a self-perpetuating snowball. So, you know, there's, there's uh, anger at China, then China's angry at everybody else. And then the, the, the countries start like government to government. Then it gets down to a personal level. And then pretty soon everybody's hating everybody. And nobody wins in situations like that. Nobody wins. So there have been some cases where uh, foreigners have been banned from going into shopping complexes or, you know, people are posting, you know, no foreigners allowed on their, on their storefronts. And uh, there have even been, like, focused on uh, the, the black population in Guang, Guang, Guangzhou or Guangdong, I think. It's one of the Guangs. Guangzhou is a, is a city within Guangdong province. I mean, I know most Chinese people aren't aren't so much bigoted more than normal people. Everybody's got a little stain in their personality of bigotry, whether we think we do or not. I think it's just I think it's just in, unfortunately inherent in, in almost any human being a feeling of I'm comfortable in my skin. You're not in my skin somehow culturally or physically or any number of ways and so you're different you're the other and from that otherness stems um anger hate you know curiosity you know and you know leads to bad things uh, early on when the virus was out breaking i think uh there were some african uh gentlemen in guangdong that went to the hospital with a COVID-19 uh, symptoms had COVID-19, and he bit the he bit the nurse. <laughs> there are really, really stupid people in this world that just ruin it for everybody. I told this story before, but I was on the bus headed to quarantine. I was headed from Sh Shanghai Airport, and I was being driven to Ningbo. Uh, me, my wife, my daughter, together, all of our bags. It was chaotic. It was like two, three in the morning. My daughter was three and a half. She was a real trooper through the whole thing. But there was checkpoints where the buses would drive to a certain checkpoint and then disseminate. And then you'd like narrow down your group. So like we would first go to like Zhejiang province stop. And then we would split off into a bus for the Ningbo district. And then we'd drive to the Ningbo district and then we'd separate off and go downtown Ningbo. And then we'd separate off again and go to the end up, which the end, which was the quarantine hotel, which is where we uh, ended up s s staying for 14 days in quarantine. Uh, it was like three something in the morning when we arrived at the first checkpoint. Um, it was dark, it was scary. People didn't want to be around us. The people that were around us were in full hazmat gear. There was a fear. The system was still fairly new as far as uh, how to sort people out at these at these checkpoints. I felt at the point in time very fearful. It was like like zombie apocalypse. Like where are they taking us and sorting us? I mean, we felt like we felt like the other, and it was nerve wracking. And you could tell people were really, really strained um, to their limits as, as well, personal limits. We went to the area of where we had to collect ourselves in order to get to the next checkpoint, which was Ningbo District. And we were waiting for the bus. My wife called to find out where the bus was because it wasn't waiting for us. And we found out that the bus wasn't gonna be there. Well, that didn't work out too well with my wife. And she started, if you know Annie, you know, what I'm talking about and she started placing some heated calls to people to try to get a bus because otherwise it was sort of my impression that we were probably gonna be there for a long time like with our daughter who was tired outdoors in these like weird half containers which were like these little little outposts where these these people were collecting to go to their district and Annie was just like you need to get a car here right now we need to get a car. We need to go home. This is also like after about 40 some hours of more than 40 hours of steady travel. We were tired. So the bus wasn't there. She called a bunch of people and was able to get somebody on the line that was like, okay, we're going to send somebody to, uh, we're going to send, send a bus. So they sort of arranged a bus for us. 
have a real suspicion that somebody, a driver, a bus driver, got a call at the end of his shift. He was thinking he was going home at like 2.30, 3 in the morning. And somebody was like, you need to get your ass over to that, uh, that, the checkpoint and pick up the last group of Ningbo, Ningbo district people. Because when the bus arrived, first thing I did is I'm wheeling all these bags. I've got like tons of bags. He's, my, my wife's taking care of even my baby. And so I'm carrying all the bags. I go to the bus driver and I look at him and I'm like, do I put these bags under, you know, kind of just signaling. I mean, he was Chinese guy. He didn't know what, 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 didn't understand English, but I was like, do I put these? And he looked at me with venom in his eyes and I didn't realize it at the time, but it was like sleep deprivation, you know, and he's, he's given me this, like when your face scrunches up out of such, such anger that you are really, really pissed off. Basically he was like, figure it the F out and get in the F and bus, you know? And it was angry. I was like, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had more bags. I ran and got more bags. By the time I got back, the other people that were going in the bus, about 10 of us, uh, figured out that the, the, just open the doors, put your stuff under the bus. He doesn't want anything to do with us. At the time, we were thought to be infected until we were out of quarantine. So he's risking his life to drive us around, and he's tired as all hell. And so we get in the bus, and uh, there's a sheet of plastic that separates the driver from us by about four rows. So like the driver's seat and then four rows back. And then there's this rudimentary plastic clear sheeting that's been taped on the roof and the sidewalls, basically sealing the uh, driver's compartment off at a distance from the passengers because he doesn't want to get close to us because obviously there's social distancing and he's forced to drive people who could be potentially infected and he doesn't want to be infected. He wants his barrier to stand as well, because if that barrier comes down, he's at risk to be infected from any one of us who could potentially be infected. So the girls get in there. First of all, the undercarriage, we can only use one little compartment. I was able to put my bags under, but I, I mean, these people were coming from Shanghai Pudong Airport. They were coming international flights. They, it wasn't like a domestic flight where you had a backpack. So they come up to the main, main area and they have, uh, their big rolling luggage and one lady rolls her luggage onto the lip of this plastic divider and the plastic divider just grows a little taut under the wheels of the uh of of the rolling luggage and he flips his lid and he starts going you can't put your luggage here in chinese not 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 in any sort of nice way He's yelling, get, out, get the fuck out of here, get that off there. And he's yelling, he's out of almost like insane desperation. It was almost like he was losing his mind. And he was like, get that off there, get that off. Don't, don't pull my, my divider down. And what he didn't want is any luggage to be in the center walking aisle. He's like, from what I could gather, he's like, it's gonna roll. It's gonna gain speed when I hit a brake and it's gonna roll through my barrier. And from what he said, it sounded like it had happened previously. And he probably flipped out thinking he was gonna get infected. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna walk to the back, confront all of the sick people potentially, and then tape up this barrier? It, it, you know, it's just, it's just a shitty situation gone shittier because he's like, I don't wanna have to go and move into your area to fix something that I have protected my put out a protective barrier because you knocked it down because your luggage broke through my my rudimentary divider. Well, there was a Western girl. I think she was American or something. And she was sitting in front of me and she was not having it. And she was like, you can't talk to us like that. You can't treat us like this. Okay. You want to stand up for the for the group? I kind of get it. But you got to assess the whole situation. There's this is a stressful situation all around and he's got to drive us to the next checkpoint. If you want to get the license plate of the bus and log a complaint or get the hell off the bus, but she was so irate. You can't not irate. She was just flippant. You can't do this to us. You can't treat us this way. 
Can you believe this fucking guy? She's she's leaning over. She's talking to all of us. If she doesn't want to be in the bus because this guy's being a dick, get the hell off the bus. And you can wait four hours at a checkpoint until the next bus. Or sit on the bus, shut your mouth, and deal with whatever this diver is telling us right now because he's the guy in charge, you know? She turns back to us and she goes, We should all just cough on him. See how he likes it. Let's just all cough on him. That was her, that was her thought at the time. That the best way to get back at this angry driver who feels fear being infected and is taking it out on us, who knows what personal issues they are, ended up driving us the like for two hours and zigzagging down the road. I mean, it was a very dangerous ride to Ningbo District, and she's antagonizing this guy by saying we all should band together and cough on this guy. You know, it, it only takes one despicable, ignorant, foolish person to bite a nurse or to antagonize in a weird, weird, horrible way. Like, that is like the worst. Coughing, all of us start coughing. Like, in her mind, what did she think was going to happen? We were all going to cough on the divider that separates this driver, he's gonna completely flip out, the police are gonna get called, and we're all gonna get sent to the hospital for COVID-19 tests, because we're coughing. But in her mind, it was like, yeah, we got him good with that one. Got him good? You would have gotten us all potentially deported if not thrown in jail. I mean, coughing on somebody, if you did that in the States, even if there was a teller at a, at a grocery store that was treating you poorly, yelling at you, you cough on that guy? I think that's assault in this period of time, in this climate of the world. But you only have to have one goofball, and it spoils it for everybody. And I think that uh, there's a few goofballs in China. There's a few goofballs everywhere. Well, goofballs in China that are making Westerners look bad. There's goofballs in, in the United States that are angry at Chinese and are spitting on Chinese people. And it's just kind of self-propelling a narrative and an anger. And, you know, guy that bit the nurse, there was people there streaming, Chinese people that were like, look at this guy, he just bit the nurse. And he's, he's an African. Let's be angry at all Africans, which I don't agree with. But, you know, you could see how this thing could, in today's climate, it's so easy. Snippets, TikTok, social media. One person does something bad and it just spreads out and becomes the narrative. I'm just glad there wasn't a Chinese person on that bus that was recording this girl saying we should cough on the driver because it would have been, it would have been a self-propagating, it would have been a message that would have been just fed out into the Chinese community and it would have trickled down on, on people like us, like me, like other Westerners who are just kind of like, just along for the ride, you know? Anyways, there have been a lot of cases that I've heard of, of people getting treated poorly. It's happening everywhere. So I, I don't think it's a, only a China thing. It's, it's just everywhere. People are nervous and scared and sad and frustrated. Now, I haven't seen much of it. I drive a car. So it's not like I got to take public transportation, which is a lot of opportunity to be interactive with the public. I'm not on a contract at a school, which a lot of foreigners are contracted to, to teach at different schools or businesses. And so they're in the community of Chinese people and maybe more exposed to uh, daily life with the, uh, you know, common Chinese citizens. We live in, a, in an age where isolated cases become normalized and people who ordinarily wouldn't get any attention because they were goofballs, become the rule, not the exception to the rule. And that's all I'm kind of saying. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Uh... Yep, thanks. In order to get into the shopping mall, you have to show your green code and make sure that uh, you, uh, you're not holding a fever. Very important.
Now there haven't been any cases of COVID-19 inside Ningbo, the city, for quite some time, but still there's, everybody uh, is adhering to the mask policy, so. There's some things that I can find here that I can't even find in the States. One of them is garlic flavored Tabasco sauce. This is good stuff. When I cycled through Taiwan, I came to the place where they, they farm these. Oh my God. If you've never had a custard apple, Delicious, sinfully delicious. On the diet I've constructed for myself, um, cheese is a good snack. It's much better than having carbs and bread and stuff. So instead of chips, I have a block of cheese I nibble on. A tip given to me by a friend of mine named Mark. Up in the front area, they actually have a cordyceps mushroom area where they have all sorts of Chinese herbal medicine and remedies. Cordyceps are are, are a fungus that grows out of the butt of a caterpillar that is um, found in the mountains. It used to be found in the mountains. Now they're, I think they're farming in many different ways, but it's supposed to be good for you in all sorts of crazy, like heart health and you know virility and life, life extension and stuff. But they're also selling bird's nest, which is funny because I've been to a bird's nest house and seeing the bird's nest packed, packed up, all clean and neat. I used to see the bird's nest stuck to the stuck to the bird nest houses in all its dirty glory. Thank you. All right, well, I didn't think I was gonna get any, any sidelong glances or anything, but I didn't. There, this is a pretty fancy place though, like a fancy upscale mall. So I didn't think I was gonna get much. In, in way of uh, any, any dirty looks. They were selling a lot of bird's nest in there though. Man, people are making a lot of money off those things. I think that basically the thing you gotta, you gotta do is just, you've gotta really, really try and sort of lay, lay as low as you can, you know? Don't draw too much attention to yourself. Wear a smile as much as possible. That's my big thing. If I can smile, now your mask covers up your smile, but you can smile in the eyes too. And oftentimes it's very disarming. I think what you get is paranoia and fear from people and they might look at you with apprehension, but as soon as you give them that happy eyes, hey, then they, they tend to, well, in my experience, that's always been a real good way to break through somebody's um, fear barrier and get to the, uh, get to the meat of, of, of human, which is normally pretty accommodating and friendly. Anyways, you guys have a good night. I'm going to drive home and take it easy and uh, yeah, be good. Jayo, bye-bye. I have one camera. You do? Uh-huh. I remember. Is it like my camera? Uh-huh. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What color is it? It's pink. Mm. Does it take nice pictures? Are you a good picture taker? Mm -hmm. The best? Are you better at taking pictures than daddy? Uh huh. <gasps> daddy take good pictures? Yeah. Me yeah. Too. Okay, good, good, good. I think you are cute. I'm um, cute. Do you look like, do you like like daddy at all? What I have here. I know, Daddy I doesn't. I a girl.